Today is the third day of March 2014 and we are very pleased to have Amarendra with us to speak of some of the early days of the ashram and his experiences. Welcome Amarendra. Thank you. <laughs> How did you first hear of Mother and Sri Aurobindo? Holy day? First hear about Mother and Sri Aurobindo. I? Yes. It is long since, you know, it is uh, uh, 1942 or 3. My father was bent towards spirituality or rather religion. So a friend of his came from nearby village and he told about Srivindu that such and such yogis are in Pondicherry, yogis exist in Pondicherry. So naturally when he heard it, he was inclined to come here and he come here if I am not mistaken in the year 1941 or 42, mm -hmm. during World War II. And that is how he came here. And when he came here, he came, before I came here, he came with some other persons also, my relatives. But finally he decided to let me be here and study. And one fine evening, or rather it was going to be night, my mother said that you are, you are being taken to Aurobindo Ashram for uh, to, be, to study there. Mm. But as I was very much attached to my home way and with my parents, I said, no, I will go and come back. So, okay, okay. okay. So, I came along with my father. We started on 10th of August 1948 to be exact and reached Pondicherry on 13th of August 1948. And that was Sri birthday on 15th of August. That is how I came here. And that was your first darshan of him. Pardon? That was your first darshan of Sri Aurobindo. First darshan of Sri in 1948. 1948. Now, your father had earlier darshans. On earlier, in 40, did, did during he, Second World War. Yeah, did sometime. he tell you anything about his... Nothing. Nothing. He, every, my talking was done by mother to me. He was almost dummy. Ah. I, he accompanied me here, that's all. Hmm. I see. <laughs> What was your experience when you first saw Sri Aurobindo? My experience was, as I was a boy of 13 years old, I won't say anything, but I was <coughs> amazed when I saw them. And I thought, he can't be a human being. If God existed in human body, it is here. So you came to study? To study, yeah. I came to study. Tell us about your studies. I was not at all a good student, to be very frank with you. I was more <laughs> in status in here, but I was here by, and it is a destiny, you know, predestined that I had to come here. And regardless of anything, yes. regardless of anything, I had to be there, it is like that. And how long did you stay? Yeah. Yes. Now it is that this coming August will make it 66th year. And how many darshans of Sri Aurobindo did you have? I, tell you, I have counted it, fortunately, ah, about yeah. 11 times. 11 times. Tell us a bit about mother and your early memories of mother. My <coughs> what should I say? To me, she was a universal mother. And <coughs> she, divine incarnate to me, very kind, very understanding and with perfect humility. If there was any humility in human beings, it was in her. That is my experience. So, should I go for a story? If I am not delaying you, should I tell you how I... Please, uh, please. <coughs> I was working in press and I wanted to change my work. So I wrote to Mother Mother, I want to change it. 
and uh, she, as I wrote, but she was just, see, the reason she knows best why she was delaying. So I again wrote, mother, I wrote. Then she says, you see, the sun is coming, that is, if I am not mistaken, on 24th of November, and press must be heavy with work. So I thought if you could leave it before. So I told the manager, Omeo Gangwali, tell him this. But fortunately or unfortunately, he didn't tell me anything. So, my, and after November, December was my birthday. So, before I used to ask to come for my birthday, but this time I avoided purposely, she will scold me. So I didn't. <laughs> and, but anyway, one fine morning, on your birthday, Gajaraj comes and says, Mother has called you. I said, my God. <laughs> so I had it, I thought. <laughs> then so I went there. But she was mother. Broad smile. And she says, Oh, I want I didn't reply to you soon because I wanted this should be the impress till uh, the sun is over. But his mother, the manager didn't tell me anything. Had he said that I would have been there for, for a few more days. Oh, she must have forgotten. Also, you are working in Oro A with Michaels. You are work, work nicely and with a broad smile. I said, My God, she should have told me you have disobeyed me, get out. But she just smiles and there is not a trace of any anger or any anything. That was mother to me. And before that, Another episode, if I can, if you want to know, yes, please. the reason of my being still here, it will polish my ego somewhat, but I can't help it. That time when I came in 48, a guardian was a must, because there were no boardings, there were nothing. School was four or five years old, that's all. How old were you? Huh? How old were you? I was 13. 13. 13, yes. one, three. Yes. So, a gentleman from our place, he ventured to be my guardian. Mm -hmm. I stayed with him, or I stayed him separately. But year passed on. He used to... Somehow I revolted against him, because he wanted to everything. Come, sit here. Now tell me, where did you go, with whom did you meet, whom did you talk? Mm. And that gave me some sense of revolt, you know. Mm. Then why this? Then time passed on, passed on, passed on, almost a year. And this I'll tell you later on. My father came in 49, after 48, 49. And the gentleman told me, you have to go away from here. I said, fine, there's no problem. With no regret because I just one year later. So my father came. He didn't tell me anything as I told you earlier, mm -hmm. nothing. <laughs> He came, stayed for about 10 days, 15 days, went away. That was that. And when I went home to Jhar, Bihar, after almost 36 years, I came to the reason of my father coming here in 49. And the reason was, he actually came to take me back. Since my guardian had told him, written to him, I want to be his guardian, please come and take him back. So, he came and went away. So my elder brother, who knew everything, he told me one day we were talking in the late evening that after all you were there because mother has kept you. I said, how? So you don't know? I said, I know nothing. After 36 years I come to know. Says my father was not at all conversant in any foreign language. So he took Nolini da, Nolini Kanta Gupto, to me, with him, to mother. And not only that told him, mother, he has come to take his son because he won't have any guardian now. And see the mother's kindness. She, <coughs> she said, let him stay alone. That was, you see, my ego will be police because no one was allowed without a guardian that time. Even a friend of mine who came earlier, he had to go away because then his uh, father's elder brother refused to be his guardian, so he had to go away. And to me, you see, it was written here, destiny will be here. So that is why I am here till today, till this moment. What was the first work mother gave you? First, 
first work that mother oh, gave you? Oh, right in the beginning. You see, I was 13. I was in bakery and laundry both. Just to come early, that those days bakery started working at 1, 1.30. Very small oven with firewood. Now it is a different story altogether, topsy-turvy. way. So that was work there I was doing. Nominal work because I had to go to school and a group also. Yes. So that was the work. My first work was bakery and laundry. Did you do any sports? Yes, I was in group C. Tell us about your sports. Sports group C was the young, youthful group called C. Mona was our captain. Manoj was a captain. There were four or five captains and very adventurous group. And wherever you had to do something or anything or hard work, the group was called in. Ah. And we went marching. We had the privilege of seeing Sivinder twice in some April because once by marching we went actually like marching, you know, like this. All groups separately as you see ah, till today. Before him. Before in him, front yes, of him. Yes, yes, yes. We had on yes. the staircase turn yes. round slowly and came back. You, twice you had that. Because no, again as a civilian we could go. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> so you see, so like that. And sports, and this group was very active because you had a lot of energy. You see, we are not only the group, but all the young men were associated in building cottage industry. Incessant water was flowing from below, and whatever you did, one could not stop it. But finally, we succeeded. And today, the building is there standing, so big one. It is with Mother's grace above all, and our humble effort, that's all. You tell us in what items you are good in sports and tell about, about your bodybuilding. Uh, bodybuilding in gymnasium was very much a, but sports, I, I have played for Asram 11 in football, not a very good player. I have played cricket, I have played volleyball and basketball, it represented Asram. But I wasn't very, I was not excelling anything. So, so we can say. Passable. But you are very fit. Did you do bodybuilding? Yes, I did bodybuilding. And still, at age of 79, I go to gymnasium, but I do some light exercises of air. That's, and since that, coming in 48, I have not left connection with physical activity. So how much time do you spend in gym every day? In? Gym. gym. In the gymnasium. I used to spend more than now. Now still, I go there at about 2 o'clock and come at 4 o'clock that max. But I do some lower portion exercise and I do breathing or pranayama, you know, for about 1 hour, 10 minutes. So that makes about 2 hours still. How did mother guide you in different areas, in work, in sports, in... Mother, you see, always guided us, I think, inwardly, because we didn't come at, at all in that way. See, guided inwardly. And we did the thing, if not always, according to mother say, but we did, mis we were mischievous. We say, like breaking of pots in ashram, she used to come for vegetable darshan, you know that, Right in front of Samadhi, there is a door which goes up. There she used to come with a dish and flower, and she used to throw one had to catch like cricket ball, you know, like that. And if somebody dropped it, she would giggle very, very easily. <laughs> you see? So it was that there. Then the, and there used to be uh, terrace, terrace there, son which I don't remember, or when I came it was stopped, I don't know. Then people used to go to her terrace, a staircase darshan. I did go sometimes there also. He could meet her three, four, five times. And tell us about balcony darshan. Balcony darshan is to be held at six o'clock in the morning. She used to come along the corridor, get inside Pavitruddha's room, and talk to some departmental heads, before or after, I don't know, but there, and she would come to balcony around six o'clock. She would start surveying from one end to the other like this, which she knew best what she was doing, I wouldn't know. And 
after three, four minutes, she would gently not turn back, but go back and like reverse slowly. Ah. And after going fairly inside, she would turn. That's my experience of her in welcome. Now, as a young man, you must have had some interaction with the older disciples, Nolini, Pavitra. No, no. Any no. Nolina was very reserved. Ah. Amritudha was very joyful, jokeful. He would joke and do anything. You see, he was, in slightest pretext, he would cut a joke. Amritudha, very jovial and perfect gentleman. Pavitra was there, but I had nothing interaction with them, with him. In fact, very few had, because he was a registrar of the school, yes. you know. And what about uh, Ambu, Purani? Ambu was a very, very, I was very close with him. Towards his last stages, I used to bring him from his house to Asram by car, along with Vratati. And he would tell me many things oh. of uh, olden days. He came in 1928 to be exact. Yes. Can you remember some of the and things And many he things told. he said, I tell you. Good. About this Durga Puja, this, that, he told me. He laughed and said, you see this. Mother never wanted to do anything on her own of this rituals or anything, I tell you. But according to him, and I am definitely quoting him since he is no more. During World War II, when there was some fake bomb falling in Calcutta, many people started running away from there and came here as refugees. So many Bengali families came, these, that, that. So he, he, he said, Bratati, she went up and said, Mother, now it is Durga Puja, so we will come for you, for the, your blessings or upstairs. This all I'm telling according to Ambu. Mm -hmm. But Mother, she, mother was, she said, no, in that case I'll come down and give blessings. That is how this Durga Puja and these blessings, they started. I see. According to him. What else did he tell you? Eh? What else did he tell you? He told me many things about discipline, this, that. Say one thing about this way. Key. He used to tell me. He used to bring mothers and maybe Sri Vindu also food from mother's kitchen right opposite and carry it with it to the upstairs with covered it. So one day he said, Mother, sometimes it is closed. So could I have a key of this gate? Mother said, nothing doing. She was very serious about keys. Ah, Believe me. I see. She was nothing doing. And she says, if need be, please bring it from front gate. Ah. That was someone told me. People may say, oh, he said this, but I am quoting him faithfully. And there is no reason why he should say otherwise. Yes. <laughs> Can you say a little about uh, Pranab? Is did he, he? Did he instruct you in did, anything? You see, about Pranab, we cannot dispute the mother's aim on what she was trying with what way. And it seems he had great possibility. And a friend of mine, a very close friend who is no more, Mona's elder brother, mm -hmm. according to him, he went into the sea with Katamaran. You know Katamaran, a, yes. a naked boat, some sort mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. He went there and he came back. Mother heard from somebody and dressed him down. He says, I don't like anybody going to the sea. But yesterday, Pranav also went. But I can't tell him anything or I don't tell him anything. Either one will do. Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying to do something through him. Possibility. And this was narrated, narrated to me by my friend Gama Sarkar. There was a personal interaction with mother he had. So tell us about your years in the press and what you did in the press. Press, I was working mostly in the Threadalbets A, a very old primitive machine, you know, cylinder, 
<laughs> there I worked for about four or five years. There, and it was nothing much. And before leaving that, I went to Oro, Oro Garage. Michael was in charge of the, the cars know. which were exclusively for Oroville. Oh. It was in formative stage. I remember it. Oh. I remember Michael in '68. Yeah. yeah, and the f almost again it was a privilege for me that first paid of Oroville was put. I was present there and I participated in it. I heard, where are we going? So we are going to that place, and Oroville will come up there. So it's a fine. And today Oroville. I give very much credit to the, all the workers in general and the foreigners in particular that they have had a human's job they have done. It have, because if I, you st stood in the front, middle, you could see all around 10 kilometers horizon. Yes. Not a blade of grass, not a tree, only f two to three foot so called. Dates, but they never that gave dates. How near that, that, that date? Time. Yes, I know it. So we started mm -hmm. putting a very strong chain at the root and started pulling it with a jeep which has just come from England ah. and uprooted it. And that is how the work of Oroville started. 68. 68. Or no, 68 was late, you know, earn, but ah. it may be a little earlier. Yes, also. maybe. Yes. I can't recollect correctly but maybe little six months or a year earlier or not, but mm -hmm. it is not very accurate, my date and year. Did you, did you do any other work in Oroville? No, only that. Only and that. Just to come, mm -hmm. drive down Nabajad, the, 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 Roger, uh -huh. then some other, even Braslovsky, another uh, architect, that's to just take them and bring them back. That's a, so. On this spot in Oroville, I was never there as today they are there. I used to come and go. But it was a part of Oroville all the same. Yes. Yes. Uh, did you learn bodybuilding from Birenda or Dada? How you huh, the worry, Birenda instructed everybody. Not Puna not Bhattacharya, no. He was not there. He was busy with group. But in gymnasium, Birenda was the man fellow who was a very renowned boxer of Bengal. And he was a bodybuilder himself. He used to instruct us. Can you tell how he trained you and what other things? Came? How he how did? He how did he you, train what you? What other things you learned from him? He used to show the current. There are mirrors, as you see. They had just been put, and if any wrong movement came or anything, he used to show that this. You must give full pressure to the particular muscle so it develops like that. Like a instructor, he was there very much. So can you tell about your uh, school days, teachers and your friends? Right. School days, your school days. School days, it was also, as I told you, as I told you, that was wrong. There were teachers and we were very mischievous. We took a lot of liberty with some teachers. Hmm. So much so that it, I cannot repeat it, that we so much we used to disturb him. For instance, Chitradi's father, not only he was a perfect gentleman, a great, mathematician. He was the Auditor General of Indian Railways. He used to travel in special saloon. Unassuming gentleman, but a great man within of knowledge. So, but, but he was very, uh, and we used to disturb him a lot. I am very sorry now, but he used to do that. But Sunil Da, he had a tremendous personality, and nobody could even wink at others. He was so, and he never said what to do or not to do. The atmosphere which surrounded him was so grave that we couldn't do anything. Sunilda, who has scored the music for yes. Savitri. Yes. yes. There were other teachers also. So it was like that school. Who were your classmates? Huh? Your classmates? Classmates are gone now. Prabhucharan. Jyotindra Jawar, who is in Delhi now, so many other, Mukul, who has passed away recently, Sudhangshu, Ve, that's all that. They are all of my age. Some are younger to me by two years, like that. 
Tell me what was your impression of the atmosphere in the ashram in those very early days. I'm sorry to say that, but it was just the opposite of what it is today. According to me, I insist on it. And it was so peaceful, it was so nice, people, because you see, uh, Nara, mother chose her team of departmental heads, these, that, that, meticulously, seeing their within soul so ignorant that they were really nice and dedicated men. All the departmental heads, without exception, thoroughly honest, which in today's youngster, if I compare, it is far from that. But I don't want to be critical, I don't say, no. but it is not the same. My, I'm laying stress that it is not the same. They were really, I tell you one gentleman, one example, mm. Kiroda, he was BS office in charge, building construction. So I used to drive him down, and that time I had changed over to Atelier now, in 1955. Oh. On 16th August I joined Atelier. And I did driving for school, ashram, taking people to Madras, bringing Bangalore, everywhere. So I used to take him to the gardens. So one day I drove him down to Kajanav. I dropped him. He was looking after him. When he came back, I had plucked a guava, one guava, and I was eating it. So he came and sat with me in the car. So he tells me, you see his dedication of truthfulness. He says, you have made me commit a sin today. Why? You say, see, you, have, you are eating it without asking or anything from anybody, you see. That was the sense of honesty and a, I still remember that. They wouldn't do anything. Perfectly honest. Right on the track. But there is a lot of difference now. People may not like it if they see me giving this interview, but I can't help it. It is my impression, and I stick to it. We appreciate your honesty. <laughs> Tell us about your work in Atelier. Atelier, I, over the years. Uh, over the years. Uh, before coming to Atelier, I, I, was, I was out of school, being a bad student, and we were asked to go to fields, you know, four or five of us. And uh, after being there, going all these, that, you see, somehow we, I, we are not interested, but we had to go. Hmm. Soon find a Avai Singh, who was actually the head of Autliya in the big, right in the beginning was Pavitroda. So he, I think when he has a lot of work, heavy load, in school or in other places, he deputed Avai Singh as in charge, I think. And he was keen that I join him, and he asked mother, and I joined Atelier in 55, 16th August. And he taught me driving, which was very, very interesting in a young age. They will all know their life driving when they are young, but when they come to my age, they say, please. So it is like that. So I used to go to Bangalore, Tirupati, the, the friends used to invite me, and I played a trick with mother, which I always failed. Uh, so my friend who had bought a new hillman, this, that, and they used to invite me, please take us to Bangalore, this, Tirupati. So I wrote a letter to mother, seeking blank permission. So they called me, so should I go? And I gave my correspondence to Amritoda to read it out to mother. I still feel ashamed, <laughs> but anyway, he comes and tells me, yes, mother has seen it, but each time you go, you ask her. It was just the opposite of I wanted a blank permission, a la carte. 
And so these are the small episodes which I had with mother. And these Very are, small. These are wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> so because she knew the attitude inside what he is thinking or even she knew what he will think. That is divine. Yes. That is divine. Yes. What I don't think, I will think tomorrow. Divine knows this today. Yes. And that is my belief about divine. Come what may. That is his omnipotence. I'd like you to tell us maybe about one or two more birthdays <laughs> and the cards that mother gave you. Uh -huh. Can you talk to us about your birthday and meeting mother on your birthday? Oh, so nothing long conversation or anything. But as you say, that is the only date on human beings where they can be in contact with Supreme only that day. Because somehow mother explained it also, but I don't know the detail. Other days, Sivindu also gave nothing about Darshan days. Sivindu says, what descent, what descent? Grace can descend anytime, anywhere. <laughs> but people had false belief on Darshan days only. Ah. So he said, what? But yes, on birthdays, the date has some significance. You see? And some people question this. Ah, but but many questioned it. Ah. <laughs> Even later they questioned it. I see. Now, agenda I read, I almost have read almost all, 1 to 13, uh, 2 to 13. There they question mother. Yeah. Mother said, Srivindu was the supreme, not emanation, mind you. She was the supreme who descended here. But some says, uh, 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 somebody said, no, no, she said, manifested half of the supreme. The half which has manifested, he was, some said, no, full, full. mother said, no. He was the man, supreme himself who descended on earth, who material, who, who manifested. And the other half is not yet manifested, so it is not full. That remains to be done, I think. <laughs> and what... Do you feel the same guidance from mother today as when she there was in no, her body? There is no semblance of doubt. She is guarding us. In spite of our shortcomings, in spite of our failings, in spite of our imperfection, in spite of our ignorance. There is, to me there is no semblance of doubt. And she will continue to do so as long as she thinks it is because she is the ultimate arbitrator who knows yes or no. Because nothing can happen without her knowledge, negative or positive. But when negative things happen, one tries to lose faith, you know, shaken. But that's incomplete surrender, I think. What do you say? The surrender is not complete. Yes. I want only good things to happen to me. What sort of a man I am then? Yeah. Yeah. No? Yes. Do you agree with me? I agree with you. Yeah, that's yes. Uh, you have seen mother coming for athletics competitions. Mother? Coming to athletics competitions. So can you tell about doing athletics? Coming to? Athletics uh, competitions. Athletic competition. Huh? She used to go. So you, mother has witnessed... Uh, another episode was there, you have reminded me. Mother came till 59 July, if it is not very, because 67 so years ago, I can't be very, I go minute to That's minute. Sure. So, she used to come, and one very late 50s, I think, she stopped coming. And... Uh, So there was a, from PD office, the department, they had put some very strict things. You have to do, do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. The certain items before, five or six or seven maybe boys, we were forced to do such certain things. And it was walking, I think, 1500 or so something. 
So we are not at all serious. We are doing it very lightly. So the organizers were very upset. And one of the main organizers went straight because PD chief Pranabhachar was not there either. Went and reported that these boys were doing this, 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 this. One of them was even smoking cigarette like things, but that is false. You know, dub ghas, grass, he had in his mouth, that's all they were uh. doing this. So when um, uh, PD chief heard this, he was very much enraged, you know. And many things were typed out, put in the notice board. Then these boys have inserted mother's presence. And we were suspended for doing many things. For, for instance, Stephen at four o'clock, they gave, they were suspended. And it was done and mother signed the, the punishment day and it was put in notice board. So when we heard, so naturally we were upset all. It is not that. Then one morning, two, three days later, I think, that's, I don't know, but two, three, very soon, mm. Mona ventured to take me up, upstairs with mother. And I went with him. And as I went straight, you go and that right side goes to mother's head, straight. And there is a room which goes before joining our staircase. There is a big room. Mother was doing something with flowers, this, that, that. And we went there and told her about this incident, I think. But not I think, it is that only. Mm -hmm. So mother took me and Mona in the room where tiger skins are there. You know that? Yes. So close the gate. And uh, started many things which I don't remember. But what hurt me most was that I told her, Mother, they have written that we inserted your presence, which is not true. She said, look here. I was standing like this and she was put my, her hand on it. Look, I don't believe anybody will insert my presence in ashram. Though her signature was there, mind you, Nara. Mm -hmm. So divine's play is something unbelievable for us. There is no sin for divine. There is nothing for divine. Divine comes here to br bring down the truth. And in doing so, there is no sin for him. A man, when he utters lie, it is a sin. But for divine, there is nothing. Because he is ever bored of everything. And she says, I don't believe that anybody will insert my presence here. But there are people here who are traveling on two boats with two legs. Oh. And when the boats will run apart, they will go down. For... I see. That was the very close interaction I had with yes. mother or only yes. one. Yes. I came back satisfied. And she at once took out the, uh, the, punishment. the punishment sense from my... Tell us a little bit about uh, playground and groundnut distribution. Oh, that was a fantastic thing. Those who have not done it, they have missed something. They have missed something. They used to, after three, we used to, she used to give groundnut going around and all those. One day, and one day we had gone to picnic in every December. So we had eaten till here. And much later, it was a, a, the, one had to say the mother full or half or little yeah. quantity. Yes. So much to say in French play, say moitié like that, you know. Uh, that I have we eat a lot. So I says, I asked for half or trep. She laughed and she said in French, "Ils ont mangé toute la journée. They have eaten whole day." <laughs> <laughs> so that was so many small, small incidents, you yes. know, anecdotes, yes. but very interesting. Yes. yes. Do tell if you remember some interesting anecdotes. About? 
But if you point out, I may be able to tell you what often I can't remember anything now. But okay. if you say something, I may remember yes. it. Yes. You have seen uh, mother playing tennis or have Of course, I have or seen or it. Yeah. But uh, we very young boys had never the privilege of playing with her. Mm. But a senior to us like Sumantro, this they did play with her. But we used to see every evening. It was without, I think, any. If I am not mistaken, we never missed there. We ceased to play tennis. Those days will never come again. But they were days. And how many times in a day would you see mother? It depends on that, you know, how many times. Some is to say four or five times. Ah. Some is to say two times, like that. There's a, if need be, I could go on the staircase when she is giving flowers, like that. But did you write to mother when you had some problems, departmental problems? Any problem letters? about? Did letters? you write? Did you write to mother? No, that is this. I have this. You know this problem. Uh -huh. I should have. And in fact, she told me, whatever you face, you write, and I will reply. Uh -huh. And this, I didn't tell you that when we went up for her, that uh, that they have insulted mother's presence. Yeah. Then I told mother about my superstitious mind I had in me huh. about that. And I told her, Mother, this is, this is well, say, you write down and give me, I will answer. But I never did it. Another big episode in my life with Mother was, I was working in workshop, and that time just tractors have come for field work. We used to go to field, you know, and do plowing, do Puddling before for uh, paddy, paddy, paddy yes, 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 yes. And I used to do that. It was so I was fairly close in connection with tractor also. So one day a hoisting comes in the morning, and he tells me, "Mother has told you not to drive tractor. She gives till she gives clearance." Ah. Then how it happened? It seems. Mother in her bathroom, and she used to open the adjacent door going to Srivindu's room. And as she was going to open, she saw a very living vision all over a point of destruction, this, that, you know. And she saw me standing there beside a tractor. <coughs> so she says, it is in cassette one. You can anybody can see. I did want to ask you about the history of the taxi service. Uh, how it began? It, taxi. It isn't taxi. You see, in the year fifty-five. In fact, when I came here, if my memory doesn't deceive me, in Pondicherry, I don't know. But mm -hmm. there were, in whole of Pondicherry, hardly, there were 50 cars, even locally. Ah. Ashram had more than any. So there was no taxi, nothing. And in that year, somebody offered a new Austin car to mother. Ah. And she suggested to Abhay Singh, those devotees who come here, you put them at the airport or Madras, and some nominal charge of 80 rupees they used to take that time. And particularly one coming from Africa as Sunanda's father mm. or Mano's maternal uncle, like that chosen few, used to be dropped in Madras and we used to go and drop them and come back. So it was, now they don't say it is taxi, but it is, and it started with full approval of the mother. Mm. You see? You're still doing the same work? I'm still driving, but <laughs> going long distance, you see, now there's a lot of yeah. the interest has dwindled. It, as it happens, you know. Yes. In age of 22, 23, what you feel, you can't feel at age of 79. Yes, but the traffic has also changed. Oh, <laughs> it is unbelievable, unbelievable. You were telling us about uh, mother's vision. Vision. And how she saw and you. She saw 
in the sense of field of great a confusion. It wasn't very a since he saw me there. And Pavitrudha, it is in tape record, you know, Supremes, uh, uh, number one. Mm -hmm. There she tells my name two, three times, Amarendra, I saw him. Ah. Then Pavitra says, why was he there? He says, I don't know, I don't know. Pavitra says, is it industrialization of India or these? Mothers never said anything, I don't know anything. But he was there. Then he asked Abhay Singh, as I told you in balcony, he used to come to Pavitra's room there, they used to see her. She told him there, they'd ask him not to drive tractor till I give the clearance. And after two or three days, Abhay Singh told me, mother said, all right, you can go ahead. That was that vision. The protection. Obviously. Obviously. Huh? Obviously. Yes, yes. What else? Yes. There are many people today around the world who are seeking, and some of them have found through the internet about Mother and Sri Aurobindo. There's no doubt about it. What would you say to young people who are seeking today? Narad, there is only one panacea for human beings to have that faith. And that can only sustain you. They, they are all my personal belief, huh? please. Yes. It's not that. Yes. Without faith, you cannot do anything. Which has to be unshakable, which can be move mountain. Somebody asked Sirvindu, says, the Ramkaran says, you must have the faith which can move mountain. Sirvindu said, yes, otherwise it's no faith. Yes. If you say, oh, mountain won't move like this, what sort of faith you have? It is not a faith at all. You must have that. To the young men sitting around, that is the only way. To that firm belief, and most important, to be above religion. Ever have religion of Hindus, Muslims, Christians, Buddhists, or anything. They don't come in Mother Sensu in this domain at all. If one reads the agenda, they will find out at once. No, 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 no in Oroville, no religion, no religion. In volume after volume, she repeats. What so do you mean, sir? But, but, yes. You see, this is, this belief has not come yesterday or day before yesterday. It is of centuries back. And people don't want to give it up out of only one impurity. The greatest impurity is fear. They don't want to give it up. Because, oh, that God who was, if he gets angry, what will happen to me? This sort of fear which binds you like this and doesn't want to leave you. So in many messages, mother says, hero, make us of hero warriors. That is the hero warriors. Unless you become warrior, you cannot give it up, regardless of consequences. Yeah. You see? That is all, but I, can't, I won't say I advise them, but I can share my belief. In all my talks, it is that only. I am sharing my belief, believe it or not. Yes. And I don't believe that one thing, that what I believe is, as will be right. No, may not be. How do I know it? But as long as I believe it, I believe it steadfastly. Don't leave it. Don't, I don't allow it to shake my belief in it. That's all. But you have her guidance right here, all the time. <laughs> all the time. All the time. All the time. And you see, main problem I have faced here is the involuntary thought waves which come rushing to disturb you, which come rushing to raise a revolt against the divine that I am experiencing still. And it is a terrible thing to get rid of it because you are totally unable to control it. As Subindo said in his evening talks, forget the illusion that you are making the thought 
formation. Forget the illusion. It comes from the universal. And universal, they are filled with divine shakti and dark forces. But my mind is so much a, involved in it, and it is bending towards the adversary that it disturbs us. It raises all sorts of nonsense, say, thought against the divine. No, this, that, that, that. I wish I could have, I have written down my, about mind, mother says, two, four or five lines. Oh, they are priceless about mind, what mind is. <laughs> I should have brought it down, you know, anyway. This mind is the only obstacle today in human life. What do you see presently in the world? And what do you feel in the world presently? Presently, I feel is a tremendous confusion. Mother says in Venus agenda again, the earth is far from perfect. And there is just conflict. And the conflict of religion. Each one trying to say this is my best, my each one, and that is how Mother says, religion failed, because each one wanted exclusively his own religion. So they have failed. And regardless of any Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, anything, each one wanted exclusively for its own religion. As Mother and Sivita each religion contains some truth, but not the whole. When you rise above religion, the whole truth is revealed, not before. Mother says, no, the religious period is over. Now we are entering the world of spirituality. But she says in her own centenary volume, the days of religion are over. It can never again foretold again. Never. But we want it to happen very soon, quickly. But you see, divine's patience is for our one second divine is one year, one hundred years. Yeah. There's no difference. Yeah. And that is there we struggle. Yeah. That is there we don't get peace. Our ego comes in and says, come on, come on, come on. It is where? A hundred years is far off. Come on. Ego plays a tremendous nasty game. And mind accepts it. What to do? But mother tells Sapram, Mupati, there is no other way but to bear it. Mupati, there is no other way but to bear it. Yes. You have to bear, 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 bear. That agenda is a, almost, a, it has helped me personally tremendously to gain knowledge of supramental consciousness or anything. It's unbelievably. People may not agree with me, I know. While I'm telling you this, I know there may be opposition in it, but it's okay that I'm not, I'm not bothered about it. It has helped me, it has helped me, that's yes. all. Yes. If you are disturbed by it, it is your way. Amarindra, thank you so much. You're welcome, you are most welcome. It was uh, and you chose wonderful me. talk. He chose me for this, uh, but yes. I never thought that I'll be that uh, able of a... Uh, only my long stay here has brought me here, otherwise no. But really, it is not to show my humility. It is not to show my humility that I am telling you this. What I am telling you is from the bottom of my heart. I don't think I am that a to give you this. But again I will repeat that whatever I have said is my personal opinion. I am not advising anybody to follow it. And if they see the recording, they may be get disturbed. But I would request them not to. Because it is my personal feeling. I am sharing my views with you, that's all. Yes. Which is not a fault. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. That's all. <laughs>